ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Unapologetic Live. I'm your host, Om Lepinobi. Taylor's here as well. Hello, Taylor. What's up, guys? Woo-woo. Excited to be here with you guys today. A most auspicious day. <laughs> um, we got some things I wasn't expecting last night, uh, both in my DMs, in my email, all over TikTok, all over Twitter, any platform, you name it. I was getting heat from the political left. And why? Why? Because I made a video, I believe last week, I, you know, I'm getting my days confused at this point. I'm so busy. But I made a video, um, a podcast episode last week, reacting to a TikToker by the name of Dylan Mulvaney. You might recognize the name because you watched my podcast or because you are on TikTok and you see this creator. Dylan Mulvaney has about 2.4 million followers on the platform, hundreds of thousands of followers on other platforms as well, and is known and has become famous for making videos about the day in the life as a transgender person. In my podcast, podcast, we went through about, I think, day one through 30, skipping through certain videos and reacting to what it's like to, quote, become a girl and to transition into this new form of girlhood or womanhood. Of course, I represent the conservative end of things, as I made abundantly clear in that video. And challenged people, gave questions for why I disagree with the sort of transgender ideology, especially the idea of that being good to teach to children. And we talked about that on the show. We criticized some of the ideas that are expressed in this video, but not from the space of not allowing Dylan to do whatever he wants to do with his body. That was the point of the video and something that I disclaimed at the very beginning of it. Dylan is a grown adult. He can do whatever he wants to do with his body throughout his life. And I will not have a problem with that. I do have a problem with telling people that this is something that is abundantly normal, that it's just what people go through in their daily lives, and that it's something positive specifically for children, that we should promote this idea of gender confusion and it being totally fine to just transition and change to whatever gender it is that you see fit. I think that is inherently harmful for children and we will get into why. So apparently Dylan was made aware of this podcast, which is totally fine. And I want to extend an invite at the beginning of this episode to Dylan, if you would ever like to be on the podcast or have a conversation in what on whatever platform you see fit. If you want to do it through TikTok Live, I know that's your biggest platform. We could do it on your TikTok as well, sort of on your home base where you feel more comfortable. We could do it on my show here on YouTube or Facebook or an Instagram Live. I would love to have a discussion with you to go through some of the points I made on that episode. Because personally, I feel as though I was extremely respectful in both disclaiming things at the outset of the episode and also going through my way of thinking as it pertains to transgenderism and gender ideology and expressing my concerns and asking everybody else, even those who disagree with me, though that's not popular these days to talk to people who disagree with you, but asking those who disagree with me to also state their claims and give their points in response to the things that I was saying. I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to say. At no point during that episode did I mention anything hateful, uh, incite violence in any way, or ask the followers of my podcast to send hate, to go to Dylan's page, or to interact with it in any way, shape, or form. And we'll talk about the idea of hate speech, the idea of violent speech, and whether or not as a creator with a big platform, whatever that means, you are responsible for what your followers do. We will have that discussion because it seems to be something that comes up not only in Dylan's video and analysis of this whole podcast episode, but in also the reaction that I'm getting from Dylan's followers who are now on my page, some with respectful and rational ideas, others with baseless accusations and very violent death threats. You can look at those if you want to go to my Instagram and look at my story. There are some pretty obscene things that have been sent to me through DMs, through my email, on all of my social media pages. And we'll talk about whether or not as a creator, you are responsible for what your followers do. I think you can guess what my opinion is on something like that. But let's get into this because I did get a response, or at least Dylan did post, day 45 of girlhood, the haters. Uh, it's a long one, trigger warning, comma, transphobia, or sorry, colon transphobia. Let's take a look day 45 of being a girl and we are talking about the haters. I did not want to make this video but I feel like there's maybe some good lessons to be learned. I'm hopefully not going to get emotional but this is still very fresh and you all know I like to keep my content really positive but sometimes that's not what life gives us and we got to roll with it. 
it has been brought to my attention that I was on a podcast last week without my knowledge. A pretty successful woman podcaster did an entire hour long episode on my videos in a, a very negative light. I'm not going to tell Negative meaning I don't agree with the ideology that you are claiming to uphold and saying is positive. Okay, if we want to call that negative, sure. It is an opposing dissident opinion for what you represent. Sure, negative. Let's continue. I'm going to tell you who it is or where to find it because it's just, it's not productive to any of us. And, I'm and the, the idea of a podcast that questions your ideology not being productive is a really interesting thing. Why is it unproductive to have these conversations with people who disagree with you? Again, something that I made abundantly clear at the outset of the episode. If you disagree with me, please put it in the comments. Please actively be in the chat so that we can talk about these things and work through them. Why is that not productive? And that seems to be something that leftism seems to elevate, that the idea that it is unproductive to talk to people or talk about people or even their ideas uh, that disagree with your opinions and your, your view of the world. Why is that unproductive? I'm not gonna listen to the episode because I'm fragile and I'm literally in the beginnings of my transition and the last thing I need to do is hear someone talk specifically about me in a terrible way. But I did watch the sizzle video that is about three minutes long and her main- Okay. The idea of making a video about something in response to my podcast, a podcast that you openly admit you did not watch. This was an hour long episode. And we talk about the time frame as if it being an hour long means it's a even bigger attack because it was an hour long podcast rather than a 30 minute one. I think that that matters not. The reason it was an hour is because we went through these videos, we dissected them, we talked about the ideas, we expressed our questions surrounding this ideology. For you to have such a visceral reaction to something that you did not watch is very concerning and I think it does speak to that fragility. Why is there such fragility around these subject matters when in daily life Dylan is very open about being trans and having this lifestyle and has again over two million followers on these platforms. Doesn't seem like something that is very fragile at least in other cases but when it is subject to criticism and put under a microscope it crumbles in this way and that's something that we should talk about and not from a position of hate not from a position of disdain or transphobia which is a, a word i just completely disagree with from an actual question standpoint of why such a visceral reaction to someone respectfully questioning your ideology main overall point that she was trying to make concerning me dylan was that why can't dylan just be a feminine man and why can't you know, some women be masculine women. Why, why, tr why do we have to allow trans people to exist? And the second she said that, I knew that she's never had to question her gender before. Yes, feminine men do exist and I applaud them. Hello, feminine men. I, I, I'm proud of you for, for being you, but I'm not a feminine man. That's not. Okay. <laughs> so I expressed in this video, Dylan can be whatever Dylan wants to be and present to the world however Dylan wants to present to the world. However, what you don't get to do is turn around and tell other people, you must affirm it. You must alter what is your reality for my idea of what the world is. Dylan, you can do whatever you want. People who are trans can do whatever they want. I expect the same grace in return that i can do whatever i want with my life and i can live in the reality as i have lived my entire life but suddenly we have this new phenomenon and people will say it's not new but this complete epidemic of transgenderism and gender theory is relatively new to our society and you're perfectly fine to live in that present yourself however you want go through the surgeries wear makeup wear feminine clothes do feminine hair do whatever it is you like to do with your adult body very important point there adult body however you don't get to tell me and compel my speech for what i call you what is normal and what is reality and i struggle to come to a conclusion on how one can truly believe they are a woman now gender dysphoria of course exists we've seen it time and time again it is a true affliction that people 
have. And I think it's something that we do need to talk about and discuss. But right now, what we're doing is blindly affirming this affliction rather than having a detailed discussion about what treatment has the best outcomes, because clearly the treatment that we are subjecting people to now does not have the best outcomes. So my question, another question here, what makes a woman or in Dylan's case, a girl, because Dylan does not like to call himself a woman. He likes to call himself a girl. What makes a girl? What makes you a girl? Because it's not the gender roles and the way that you present yourself that makes you a girl. It's not the DNA that makes you a girl. Is it a feeling that makes you a girl? Or is it this affliction that makes you think that you are a girl? Just a question that is posited. And anybody who's a leftist or a part of the transgender community, please feel free to answer that in the comments not who I am and to suggest that that is how I should live the rest of my life would mean a lifetime of, of unhappiness for me and in that same video I have to keep pausing I, I apologize uh so I'm not suggesting that that is the way that you live your life I am suggesting that you allow other people to live in reality as they see fit Again, you can do whatever you want to do with your body. You don't get to turn around and tell other people that they must affirm you. And it is very jarring that you get so emotional when somebody fails to affirm you. And it seems as though you need outer validation in order to validate who you think you are as a being. And that's not something that I think is good or represents an ideology that is particularly successful or leads to health and wellness in any way, shape, or form. So again, you can do whatever you want to do with your body. You just don't get to tell me how I'm meant to view the world and what I'm meant to say. So she talks about how I'm showing and doing things that should not be seen by the public. And the only thing I can come up with is that I've worn a bikini or I did a Trader Joe's haul. I haven't even cursed in my videos yet. So she says she doesn't wish me any ill will, which feels very passive aggressive because when you have a platform that large, just because you aren't wishing me ill will, a lot of your followers are. And that's when I messed up and I read the comments. Oh. Pause. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about this idea of violent speech or what your followers do or having a massive platform. First, let's state the facts. Dylan has 2.4 million followers on TikTok. 2.4 million followers on TikTok. So who has a larger platform? Dylan has the larger platform. And after Dylan made this video, I received death threat after death threat after death threat after hate comment after hate comment. Uh, again, those are on my Instagram. You can go and check them out. So Dylan's followers decided that it was conducive to conversation, I guess, to go and send me death threats. Does that make Dylan responsible? No. In that same light, in that same vein, does it make me responsible for things that my followers do? No. You as an individual are only responsible for your words and your actions. And if other people decide to do things that you did not ask them to do or insinuate that they should do, that's on them. Individuals are, are responsible for themselves and nobody else. I am not responsible for what people who follow me on my platform do. If I say I hate McDonald's and somebody goes and sets a McDonald's on fire, I'm not responsible for that. The same can be said for people who send hate comments. And that's why I'm not blaming Dylan for the hate comments and the death threats that I've received because it not it's not rational. Let's continue. Ah, and I had felt like this past month, I had been surrounded in a bubble of love. And in a moment it just shattered because it wasn't just hundreds of transphobic comments, it was hundreds of comments about me personally with these people using my name i spent so many years of my life feeling like an alien feeling wrong feeling guilt and i'm not gonna go back there i'm not gonna let those people do that to me i'm gonna try my best to just unread it and to let it go and and keep focusing on the people who do want to listen to me i'm less concerned about those people and i'm more interested in speaking to the people that really are on the fence about transness or are interested in my story. But those people in the comments, they've got a long way to go before they're on the Dylan train. If all those people in the comments can watch my videos, see me, and truly believe that I'm evil, that I am mentally ill, that I'm a predator. 
And let's go ahead and disclaim, I do not think that Dylan is evil or a predator. If we want to talk about mental health in relation to this, I don't think this video paints a particularly pretty picture of mental health. And I don't think feeling so distanced from the sex that you were born with as to change your gender and present differently speaks very kindly to the mental health situation you're in. I don't think the outcomes of transgender people, even those who undergo sex reassignment surgery and who are accepted by their community and their family when it comes to suicide, I don't think those outcomes paint a particularly pretty picture of mental health or mental illness. So those are things that we need to talk about. We don't need to jump into the vein of calling people evil or predators unless we have evidence uh, uh, to suggest that. So I want to set those two words aside and say I by no means think that Dylan represents uh, anybody in, in that camp or in that set of ideas. Mental illness, though, and mental health is something that we should be talking about related to body dysphoria and gender dysphoria because it was characterized as a mental illness until this progressive campaign sort of moved and changed it and it's it's gone as far as to be changed in the dsm-5 which is questionable and doctors question it but those doctors get silenced and ousted from the community so we're not creating a climate that allows us to have these conversations which is why i would love if Dylan would come on the podcast or we could do a TikTok live together to talk through these things and have a discussion about it. And I will treat Dylan with the utmost respect as I believe I have done in the episode that I did and in the subsequent videos where we talk about these things. So I will continue to do that and I will continue to push to have these conversations. I wish somebody would step up to the table and meet me there to have those conversations. Then there's something wrong with them because that is not what I am. It's almost as if all of those people, including that podcast host, are against people being happy. It is as if they want to strip the happiness away from me. I, I, I won't let them do that. They can't. And I hate that those negative people could be watching this video right now and finding joy in my hurt. Trans people, we're just trying to be happy. We're just trying to get by. This is scary enough. What goes through your mind when you leave an evil comment like that to anyone else that is dealing with hate or bullying? I wish I could take the hurt away. I really do. But that's what those people are. They're bullies. I know for certain is that my life will be so much more joyous and full of love and laughter and richness and all of these things than theirs ever will be. Can't believe I just made a crying video. I'm so sorry. An interesting idea that just because somebody disagrees with your set of ideology and how you view things like gender and sex, which have represented traditional values thus far, up until thus far, that they will never experience joy or happiness or love in the way that you experience it. And that's where we've gotten as a society and a culture that is very concerning, that because somebody disagrees with you politically, you think they stand on moral ground that is somehow thinner than yours and that they can actually represent an evil entity that is tied to who they are as a being and that they are somehow toxic and not as worthy of love or not going to experience love in the same way that you do. We're actually just all human beings who through our experiences and who through what what we've seen and what we've learned have come to different conclusions and I used to be in this camp of people you guys know that if you watch the program regularly although I imagine there are some new people watching today hello I used to be a former leftist I used to support used to support gender ideology I would have been four years ago at the front line of some of these protests saying this is what we need to be teaching in schools this is what children need to be hearing these are the people that we need to support and we should blindly affirm them because that is what is good for them upon doing research and looking into this and actually looking into the outcomes for trans gender people and how it affects society and culture as a whole, I have gotten to the opposite opinion. And I've done so respectfully. And when I see a video like this of somebody crying, not only about hate, but about their position and how scary it is to be living this lifestyle, it begs the question, if this lifestyle is so scary and something that makes you so fragile as a human being, why is it that you have dedicated your TikTok career to promoting it to people and people who you know are impressionable and young and view you as an influence? 
if you are so fragile and it is so scary and in this next video that we will show in a minute dylan asks why was i born this way and i ask god or whoever is above why was i born this way if these are true questions that you are asking yourself and having to come to terms with how can you promote this lifestyle to other people another genuine question that i would love for dylan to come on the program and talk to me about because i'm not understanding so i think from this video we've concluded a i was not hateful in my podcast whatsoever also what you do as a creator Ha, is, is what you do as an individual. And what your followers do is what they do as individuals. It has nothing to do with you unless you directly ask them to go and send hate to somebody, threaten somebody, or bully somebody. I extend that respect and that compassion to myself, and I extend that to Dylan as an individual as well. So, and we have some questions that I've stated and left behind for the people who disagree with me. And if Taylor sees anything in the comments that uh, constitutes an argument, we will talk about that as well. Now, I am going to say goodbye to my friends watching on the PragerU channels, and we are going to be on Amal Epinobi on YouTube, we'll be still on Rumble, we'll be on Getter, we will be on PragerU's Facebook and my Facebook as well, but we are saying goodbye to PragerU YouTube, and we're going to watch Dylan's second video where I was mentioned and respond to that as well. So here is Day 45, Part 2. Day 45 continued, or I suppose part two. Um, I wrote something and I would like to read it to you. Okay. <laughs> I've soaked in the bathtub for over two hours now, most of the while staring at the ceiling, extending my vision upward to some higher power, God, the universe, whomever or whatever created me. And I ask, why me? With no reply. I ask, why am I trans? No reply. I ask, why now? Nothing. And then I add, when I am so fragile. And some voice, whether it is my own conscience or a higher power or my creator speaks and says, it is because you are fragile. I ask, but what if I break? The voice says, you'll put yourself back together like you've done many times before. But what if this time I can't? The voice says, then the others will do it for you. And uh, in a way, that's what y'all have done for me tonight. So thank you. I've, I've been wrapped in love um, and I'm, I'm just wildly grateful. But I do, I just wanna remind us all that social media can be so isolating. And the fact that I've heard from thousands of people tonight and yet I'm sitting alone in my studio apartment with these dark thoughts and, and not to worry, I'm, I'm gonna go to bed tonight, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and I'm, I'm gonna find happiness. But I just, I wanna remind us all that it's out there that really counts, that we need to be doing the work and showing up. And, and even that, that podcaster I was speaking about, she made a video this evening and talking about how she might have to delete her Instagram account. Um, and it did, she, she named me again, which that part bothers me because it's when you name me and show my face that then I get scared about my safety. Okay, uh, first of all, the video about deleting the Instagram was a total joke, but that's, that's okay. Maybe it, it did not land. But let's talk about the second part, that what bothered Dylan is my mentioning of his name and showing the videos. This is an interesting idea, considering the videos are public, they're on TikTok, and Dylan has far more followers than I have on the platform. 2.4 million followers on the platform. Has also done a special with Good Morning America, is I believe working on a beauty brand deal with another brand. So the idea that visibility and your name and face being out on the internet and garnering criticism is scary for you, questionable idea. Because if that was something that was scary to me, I wouldn't have a TikTok with millions of followers and be making daily videos. Uh, so I, I'm not sure how that claim holds up. Again, if you see it in a different light, let me know in the comments down below. But, you know, she's getting a lot of hate from my side of things. And I just, I want to tell us all that's, that's not us. That's, we don't need to do that because that's not what my platform's about. And it just fuels the fire and you know, fighting hate with hate, it's, it's just not gonna get us anywhere. So let's go out. Fighting reasonable, rational arguments and questions with hate. 
I want to make that very clear. It's not fighting hate with hate. It's fighting somebody who rationally asked you questions and criticized your ideology in a very respectful manner with hate. That is, and I'm not saying that Dylan was pushing hate at all because Dylan didn't do anything in his videos to promote hate whatsoever, but your followers responded with extremely hateful comments and death threats. So again, I was just making reasonable arguments, asking questions, and then we got hate in response. Out there and protect trans people. And um, thank you for pre protecting me tonight. I just, I feel really loved. And you know what, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and do it all over again. Well, hopefully not this day, but um, we're gonna we're gonna be okay. All right. Good night. I love you. Day okay, and that is it. Those are the the two responses that we got. Now I took some notes about things that I wanted to talk about, and this idea. And really, I question why was this getting such a massive response from from Dylan's followers, from Dylan himself. And it's this idea that because somebody is fragile in vulnerability and vulnerable, that they should be shielded from criticism. Dylan represents a very happy, bubbly, talented person. I think that is a beautiful, wonderful thing. But if a bubbly, happy, talented person promotes ideology that is harmful to people, and we'll talk about why it's harmful, that doesn't mean that they're shielded from criticism and nobody should bring that up and talk about it. And I did it in the nicest manner possible, but we still have to talk about these things. And somebody being feminine and, and cute and happy and positive, which is all great things, and I think that's wonderful and wish them the best and happiness, does not mean we don't call them out when they make claims and promote a lifestyle that is not beneficial or conducive for health and well-being. And you, again, can believe whatever you want. You don't get to tell other people what to believe. And I think why these videos are so emotional is really interesting. That Dylan says, I was surrounded by this bubble of love and suddenly the bubble was popped and somebody got in there with criticism. That's not the way we, we lead lives. People get criticism. People get offended. They get mean comments, especially on the internet. That comes with the territory on the internet. We can have a discussion as to whether or not it should come with the territory, but it does. And we are growing a culture right now of young people who expect everything to be perfectly fine and all of their whims are going to be bent over to by everybody around them and they get to morph reality into whatever they want and say whatever they want and people are just supposed to bow and say yes you see it that way so i see it that way too and the second someone criticizes them it's called hate speech it's called violence it's called bullying when it is none of those things we do not live in this cushy cloudy world that is completely devoid of criticism and opinion and offense if i wanted that to be the world, or if that's how I viewed the world, I wouldn't be doing the job that I was doing. Nobody would be able to work or do anything in this world because that is not how life works. We debate ideas. We come to different opinions. We have uh, arguments about things. We debate things. And that is what life represents. That's how we become stronger. And that is how we find truth. Dialogue is the avenue to truth. And if we start to shut out dialogue with things like violence or, or hate speech or characterizing things as violent and hate speech when they are not, we are living in a sick society that is going to be so far from reality that we will not know up from down. And that is where we are headed. That is where we're going as a society. Now, I want to talk about the people who came to my comments and to my page with things other than hate, uh, with things other than death threats, because there were people who did that. And thank you to those people, because I always invite you to come and talk to me about points where you disagree. That is how we have discussions. That is how adults act. So let's welcome the adults here and talk about those ideas. So I got... Really, the main message that I got from people who disagreed with what was going on or people who wanted to come and support Dylan was, why do you care? This doesn't affect you at all. This doesn't affect society. Let somebody live as they want. Why do you care? Again, adults can do whatever they want with their body, present themselves however they want. They don't get to tell me what to say and what to believe. That's where we draw the line. Let's talk about why I care about transgenderism, particularly the promotion of transgenderism in schools, in our public institutions, in our corporations, on social media. There is a number of reasons why we should be opposed to this. And for those of you listening, maybe this is something you, you do not know, or maybe this is something you're aware of. Let's find out. So 
we promote the idea of transgenderism as if somebody can just simply believe they are a different gender, go through the medical transitioning, the puberty blockers, the hormone blockers, the sex reassignment surgery, and everything is fine. Poof. You are, you've gone through medical transitioning. This is the way to treat it. The society, once it affirms it and accepts it, everything is going to be fine. That is not the case. The suicide rates among the transgender community, one of the smallest demographics of our population, are abundantly and exponentially higher than they should be. About 80 to 82 percent of trans youth think about killing themselves and have reported to have thought about committing suicide. About 40 percent of those transgender young people actually make an attempt to end their lives, and a high portion of them are successful in doing so. Now, a lot of people will say this is because they don't have allies, this is because the society doesn't accept them, this is because families and schools don't accept them, and the culture in general is transphobic. Again, a word I disagree with. But when we account for these things and we look at societies that are more accepting than ever before of transgender people, the rates of suicide do not change. We can look at that in the United States. The United States has gotten more so each and every year accepting of transgenderism. You would think that as that acceptance raises, the suicide rates would fall and plummet in some cases. They are not. So clearly the treatment that we are giving to transgender individuals is not creating good outcomes. Now, for a side of, of progressivism and leftism that claims to care about trans lives, where are the people talking about this rate of suicide? And when they do, why are they simply attributing it to a society when the numbers do not reflect that whatsoever? So that's one reason why I care. Another reason why I care is that in research, 70% of young people who express uh, gender dysphoria grow out of it. This is research done by a man by the name of Ken Zucker. You can look him up. You can look through all the studies that he's done. He, run, he ran a transgender clinic where he treated uh, gender dysphoric youths and in some cases even advocated that these gender dysphoric youths undergo medical treatment. So those were extreme cases. People that he felt like throughout their life and throughout adulthood were going to remain with this identity, remain with this affliction, and he allowed them to medically transition. However, in general, he deduced that young kids and, and young transgender youths who express this affliction outgrow it 70% of the time. That's reason number two why I care that we promote this on a social media platform that is full of millions of impressionable young people. Reason number three, when we accept as a society that men can become women and women can become men, what does that do to our institutions? What does that do to our societal norms? What does it do to things like women who are in prison? Okay, let's talk about that. We have two women in a New Jersey prison who have now who are now pregnant. Why? Because men stood up in their in their prison cells and said, I'm a woman. Can I transfer over to the female facility? And they did transfer over to the female facility. I believe there's 27 transgender men, uh, transgender women is what we'll call that in that New Jersey prison facility. And now two women are pregnant. We're seeing the same thing here in California where men can identify as women and be transferred over and women are being sexually assaulted. In one case, a female serial killer, a man who kills women said, I'm a female. Can I be transferred over and is now submitted paper work. This is what happens when we accept things that are not reality as reality as a society. What about men and female sports? This has been brought to light with Leah Thomas, a man who is now swimming in a female category and beating out every other female was ranked in the 400s as a man is ranked number one as a female you are beating out women of uh, scholarships going to college getting certain jobs because we have prioritized and pedestalized transgender identifying people over biological women is that okay when they have a distinct biological advantage that is not x'd out by hormones and medical therapies it's not okay that's another reason why i care you also have men taking points in, in female entertainment. And Dylan is one of these people who is auditioning for girl roles as an actor, actress, whatever you want to say at this point. Okay, that's another reason. Uh, Dylan has been offered a Tampax sponsorship when they will never be able to use Tampax. It is a female product being offered to somebody who is not biologically female. What woman could have gotten that sponsorship? That's another reason why I care. Let's mention a big one. 
It is a huge slap in the face to biological women to have a biological man say, I'm a woman, I'm gonna just go get surgery up here, surgery down there, I'm gonna put makeup on and put on female clothes, and that is what constitutes womanhood. Women listening right now, biological women listening right now, what does being a woman mean to you? Is that all it means to you? Is it just some superficial way that you can present to society and just tell people and that constitutes womanhood? And if so, where are the radical feminists on this one? Because apparently we've been experiencing patriarchy this entire time in our society, but that's womanhood, right? A biological man can say they're a woman. Have they been experiencing patriarchy their entire life because they've been a woman their entire life according to transgender ideology? Have they been a victim of patriarchy too? So if a white male who is supposed to be the bane of existence for radical feminists suddenly identifies as female, are they now a victim of patriarchy too? That is another question that I have for you, another reason why I care. We have parents coming to school boards, crying their eyes out, talking to their school board administrations, saying, excuse me, my daughter or my son expressed gender confusion, suicidal ideation, depression, and anxiety, and came to you. And you did not come to me and express this. And now my child is attempting suicide. My child needs a psychotherapist. My child needs a psychiatrist. And you did not let me know. This idea that because our parents disagree with this ideology, that they should be shielded from it and not be told about their kid's identity and about their kids struggling with their mental health is a horrible reality that we're living in. That is another reason why I care. We have parents who are having their children taken away from them because their children express gender confusion and their parent doesn't want to run to a doctor's office and advocate for medical transition. And kids are being taken away from their parents. This is happening in the story of Ted Hadaka, which you can look up. Abigail Schreier did an amazing article on this. That is why I care. You have now children being told that gender confusion is a completely normal thing, that the treatment is simple and easy. They can go on puberty blockers. They can get hormone replacement. They can get sex reassignment surgery and everything will be fixed. Everything will be dandy. And what that is, is irreversible damage. It is irreversible. You do not go back after you have started these hormone blockers and hormone therapies for an extended period of time. In fact, they don't have definitive research on what that actually does to the human body because hormones have not been used in this way, at least not at the rate that they're being used now. So you have children who are effectively, if they go through full medical transition, being sterilized for the rest of their life after we already went over research about how 70% of them change their minds. So we are now advocating as a society that kids know exactly who they are, know what gender they are, and that parents should blindly affirm it and put them under medical transition and create irreversible damage that sterilizes children. That, these are the discussions we're having as a society now. I wasn't having these discussions five years ago when I was on the political left, although we were talking about gender identity. We were not talking about it in relation to kids and now that is the discussion that we are having this is why i care so for all the hundreds of comments that i got asking that and saying how it doesn't affect me it doesn't affect society it doesn't affect the world that is how it affects it and there are people who don't know that and to those people that is totally fair you can feign ignorance on that and say i didn't know it was causing all that harm and now i do maybe i should reevaluate but there are also people out there who are activists for this sort of gender theory who knew all of this all along and continue to advocate for it you have organizations like glad and the trevor project who say that we shouldn't even talk about detransitioners and that their stories don't deserve time because they don't represent and they're not reflective of the transgender community. These are the reasons we need to have these conversations. And the idea that because I don't know what it's like to question my gender, I can't have an opinion on it is ridiculous. There are so many things in this life that we will never understand. We will never be able to place our foot in that shoe, but we can give commentary on, we can read about, we can research. It's effectively the same as saying because you don't have a PhD or because you didn't go to college for this, you cannot speak on it. It is not a valid argument. It is not a logical argument in any way, shape or form. And we, we have eyes, we have ears, we can see what's happening. We can see the detrimental effects. We can read about them. We can hear the word from the horse's mouth about fragility and vulnerability and depression and sadness. And we can come to conclusions on our own based on what's best for us, what's best for our communities and what we feel is best for society and have those discussions. And I think that's where my commentary ends for today.
Real quick, I'm seeing a few comments of people asking, um, aren't you just using Dylan to get views or trying to you know, get clout off of his back? What do you have to say to uh, people who are making that comment? It's There are so many things you could do in this life that would get you so, so many more views, so much more engagement than having these discussions that are hard to have, that get people very angry at you, that create an environment that is not conducive for your success. If I could show you the messages that I'm getting on my personal pages right now, you would not wish that upon anybody. I have these discussions and talk about these things because they matter. And we talk about Dylan specifically, like I said, a beautiful, sweet, talented, happy, positive human being. We talk about Dylan because even talented, sweet, happy, positive human beings can promote messages that can be harmful. And Dylan is doing it, whether through choice or not through choice, at a very impressive rate. I did that video on Dylan last week. Dylan had 1.9 million followers last week when we went over those TikToks and started talking about these ideologies. Dylan now has 2.4 million followers. So what is important is the influence, and particularly with young people. I can't tell you how many teens, young teens, far younger than me, were messaging me about their blind support of, of Dylan and everything that he says in his videos and transgenderism and how children should be able to do this too. That's why we talk about this. It's not for clout. Oh my gosh, if I wanted to have clout, I would go back to what I was doing before. I was getting paid good money to be a leftist, to do protests, to do that every single day, and to educate young people about that. I would be doing that now. It's a far happier life where people just tell you everything that you're doing is good and everything that you're doing is positive. I'm taking on a lot of hate and a lot of heat to let you guys know compassionately this is something that you could be wrong about. And if you care about truth, if you care about compassion, and if you truly care about trans lives, you should do your due diligence before you support something this adamantly. Any other comments? Yeah, questions? one more. Um, just a point some people are making that putting your life out on TikTok isn't necessarily promoting trans culture or trans ideology. What would you have to say? To, about that. Yeah, so Dylan is very open about trans visibility, about supporting trans rights and trans issues. That's something that's made, that's been made very clear. It's also advocated that people who follow his platform donate to transgender organizations. These are organizations like the Trevor Project and, and GLAAD and the Human Rights Campaign. And if you go and look at these organizations and see what they advocate for, they advocate for the very things I was telling you about. Children being able to transition, transgender youth in schools, getting that education and being given the avenues to go and seek medical transition. Horrible things. And I know it's, it sounds offensive to say horrible. It sounds sad to go, you don't want somebody to be who they want to be. Of course I do. I want people boys and girls who feel this urge to uh, drive themselves towards presenting feminine or presenting masculine, by all means, present yourself however you want. I want you to have a think before you start saying, I'm not the gender that I was born as, or I'm going to go get surgery to irreversibly alter my body. By all means, dress, act, talk, uh, do makeup, whatever you want to do with your body. But do not start talking about how you are a different gender and claiming womanhood, which is something that you do not have, in getting surgeries and advocating that for young people. And that's what these organizations are doing. Dylan is very adamant about his support of these organizations and how other people should support him too. I even got people who support Dylan who were angry at me, who gave donations to the Trevor Project and, and put them in my name, which fine, you can do whatever you want with your money. That's totally fine. However, I feel obligated to tell you what these organizations are doing tell you what this ideology represents and tell you what the ideas are and the harmful impact that they're having. And now that you know, you can't unknow it. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful thing that once the curtain has been pulled and you've seen the man behind it, like in The Wizard of Oz, you can't unsee that. You now know that forever. And you can leave this video and continue to support these ideas, but now you know what you're supporting. So you are a fully educated individual. You know exactly it is what you're doing. If you still choose to do it, that is your choice. All right. Last thing here, last, um, thing. last week in the episode, you chose to use uh, woman pronouns uh, mm -hmm. when referring to Dylan. And the, um, there's 
the, a lot of comments about the pronoun conversation. So just any thoughts on sure. that uh, given today's episode? Yeah, I'm. I, I this is something that I actually go back and forth on in my head. And out of respect in the beginning, I said, you know what? I'm going to use the, the pronouns that have been asked of me. I am going to use she, her in this video. And more importantly, because I wanted people who disagree with me to watch this episode and feel comfortable enough to watch it. I think that now that I've stated my views on that, I am going to accept what I believe to be is reality. And what I believe to be is reality is that Dylan is a biological man. We are going to use those pronouns from here on out because I think it muddles the conversation. It confuses people and it creates, you know, two different perceptions of what I could be saying. And what I am saying is that I am not a supporter of this ideology and that I do believe that Dylan is a biological man. Therefore, we are going to move forward with pronouns he and him, not she and her. And hopefully people who disagree with me are comfortable with that enough to continue to watch and continue to listen. And you are more than welcome to express your discomfort with the uh, misgendered pronouns, as they say. Uh, but that's how we are going to refer to these individuals moving forward, because I just think that's the best way to have these conversations and to fully communicate what it is that I'm actually saying. All right. All right. I think those are the main points. Okay. <laughs> if you have more, bring them, though. We're yes. totally open to good faith discussion. There was a lot of, you know, troll spam, et cetera. But uh, we're, we're, I'm looking sincerely for uh, good faith questions and, and criticisms, and we will answer those anytime. So they're welcome. Yes. Yeah, you are all welcome. I hope, I think what this has done is opened up this show to an audience of people that disagrees with me, which is exactly what I want from this show. I want people, even people who absolutely hate what I have to say, you think I'm disgusting, you think I'm a bigot, you think I'm gross, watch the show. Watch the show. Put that down in the comments. Put any arguments you have down in the comments. I will respond to the arguments. I will not respond to the hateful messages. That is just the way that I roll with those things. But watch the show. By all means, this show is for you. And it's certainly for anybody who represents free thought. I don't want anybody to leave this and go, well, because she just said all those things, my mind has been completely changed and I now believe everything she says. No. If you disagree with me, you disagree with me. If you agree with me, you agree with me. If you've learned something, you've learned something. I think that is a beautiful thing. Everybody is welcome here. Everybody is welcome to listen, to watch, to put whatever they want in the chat and to have those discussions as well. That is what this space is for. That is the reason that we do this show. And I think this has brought to light uh, in, in interesting conversation and it's going to bring people who disagree over to this show. So I hope you do subscribe. I hope you do leave a comment of all the grievances that you have. Just let me have it because I'm, as you can tell, I'm not particularly sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> the show is called Unapologetic. Uh, you did not receive an apology even though you spewed tons of hate. Not, not all of you, but even though a lot of angry people spewed lots of hate, they are not receiving an apology because I, for one, Stand by the things that I believe. I expect you to do the same unless you've found out that you are wrong. And as soon as I find out that I'm wrong on anything, I will express that to you and admit it. I do think that maybe I was wrong in using the correct pronouns in that original video. And maybe we should have just reverted to what is reality and that is he, him. So to all the uh, conservatives or liberals who express that in the comments, maybe you have changed my mind on that. And it's something that we can uh, revisit in the future. So that's where I stand. Leave a comment down below. What was your general thoughts on this video and the response? Are you somebody who agrees with me? Are you somebody who adamantly disagrees with me? Are you somebody who hates me? Comment that down below. We'll hopefully respond to some of those comments on tomorrow's episode. And I hope, uh, I hope some people learned some things today, if nothing else. I think that's where we close out. Yeah, I got one more if you can. Oh, you got one more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. I've seen this thing a couple times and I think you touched on it before, but um, basically there, there's a, a point that using Dylan's name and uh, face, he made this himself and I think you touched on it before, mm -hmm. but they're saying that it, it opens him up to dangerous attacks from transphobe, such, transphobe such as yourself. <laughs> okay. So uh, what's your response to that? <laughs> okay. Let's let's break down the word phobia for transphobia. Phobia implies that I'm in some way scared. Like if I saw a trans person, I'd be like, oh, oh my gosh, a trans person, that's so scary. No, okay, so transphobic is not the right word. Because you don't support somebody's ideology does not mean you are afraid of them or that it represents a fear for you in any way. So transphobia is a word I just inherently disagree with. Uh, let's talk about this. So Dylan makes videos that are public. 
the reason that we're able to even look at those videos and podcasts is because they are under fair use because Dylan posted them publicly with the full knowledge that somebody could criticize them. And I'm sure that Dylan's 2.4 million followers are not just 2.4 million people who just agree with everything and anything that he says and posts love, nothing but love in the comments. I think he gets a lot of support and uh, that's a beautiful thing that people are so open to the way that people live and the way that people identify. I'm not knocking that at all. But when you post things on the internet, you open yourself up to criticism, especially if you come out supporting something so openly. You open yourself up to criticism. Now, if you can't handle that criticism, I would question whether or not you should be doing the career that you're doing, or I don't know that that's his career. I believe Dylan is an actor or a comedian, things like that. But you should question whether or not you should be doing that in your free time. I am an openly conservative individual on the internet. It's not a very fun thing to be on the internet. <laughs> and I get uh, so much criticism on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm sure all of you were able to witness that in the live chat today. Uh, people put my name and face everywhere and they can do so because I put my name and face out publicly. If Dylan was somebody who blurred their face in every TikTok video and said, I want to remain anonymous and I'm not going to put my name in the username and I'm a trans person and here's day one of being a girl and I outed them and said, this is Dylan, look at his face, go send him hate. That would be horrible. That would be something that I would criticize and say that is a disgusting thing to do to somebody. I didn't know. I just took Dylan's videos that are already posted and I said, I, I watched them and I said, these are my thoughts on the video. I could have put those thoughts in the comments. That would have been effectively the same thing, but I made a video about it and other people responded and had a conversation. It's really no different than what's already happening on the internet and on his videos. So it's two very different things. Cool. Well said. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's like a, a proud dad. <laughs> He's like my supporter, my mediator over on the side. Yeah, well, I'm I'm staying neutral today as a straight white male. I can't, I'm my voice doesn't count, so I'm not speaking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd get taken off of YouTube far faster if Taylor was any part of this discussion. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be something that happens. And I will clip some of this stuff and put it out on TikTok again, since I'm getting responses on all platforms. And I'm going to place my bet now. The video will not last on TikTok for more than an hour. It will not last on TikTok for more than an hour because the platform does not allow for these type of conversations. And I think that's a disgusting thing. It's a horrifying sign of where we are as a society that we cannot talk about our different ideas in this way. So let's contribute to a better society that's full of conversations and civil discourse. And you can contribute to that today, even if you hate me. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, we're gonna end the show for today. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Unapologetic Live with your host, Amala Epinobi. Again, leave your comment down below. How did you feel about this episode? Wherever perspective you're coming from, let me know. I'd love to read it. I'd love to see it, even if you hate me. And we will be back tomorrow at three o'clock Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, having more discussions about a different topic that you can hop in the chat for and talk about. We're also on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. We're on Getter. We're on Rumble. We're on Facebook. We are everywhere that podcasts can be seen, heard, listened to, and enjoyed or hated. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a fantastic Tuesday. <laughs>